So take, for example, in a, the, a case in which a crazed white homeless person is subdued by a law-abiding black American Marine who subdues him and then the white person dies. Do you think that black person is going to end up in the dock, indicted by a grand jury and prospectively spending the rest of his life in prison? The answer, of course, is no. That is not a thing that would cross any prosecutor's mind. It would not end up in a courtroom. However, if a white person does it and the person in question who died is a crazed homeless black person who is threatening people on the subway system, then the white person may end up in jail for the rest of his life. And that is the case currently with Daniel Penny. You just listened to a snippet of Ben Shapiro's monologue where he defends Jordan Neely's killer, Daniel Penny. Now, he made this video following news of Penny's indictment by a grand jury in New York. And Ben Shapiro, as you saw, actually asked with a straight face if a black Marine would go to jail for killing a crazed white homeless person. And he said no which idiotically suggests that black Americans in blue cities specifically, that's the caveat that he made, would have some sort of a privilege when it comes to incarceration. He actually said Ben Shapiro's supposed intellectual is implying that black Americans have a privilege that white Americans don't have specifically with regard to jails in this country. Hey Ben, have you looked up any stats at all on mass incarceration? You know what? Don't bother because I'll do it for you. In 2020, an analysis of Bureau of Justice statistics by the Prison Policy Initiative detailed how black men outnumber white men in prisons in literally every single age group. And they report black Americans are still incarcerated in state and federal prisons at five times the rate of white Americans. 1.1% of all black Americans are incarcerated compared to 0.2% of white Americans. The numbers are even more disturbing when we focus in on black men. One in 50 black men are incarcerated, including over one in 25 black men between the age of 25 and 44. But according to Ben Shapiro, there is supposedly this double standard where black Americans get away with crimes that white people would be punished for. I mean, are we living in the Twilight Zone? This is somebody who is supposedly an intellectual on the right? Well... If he's an intellectual, it tells you why the right is in such bad shape currently. It is such a cartoonishly deceitful portrayal of our system of mass incarceration that Ben Shapiro is either extremely uninformed or he is willingly lying to perpetuate the racist white victim complex. But the most egregious part of his commentary has got to be the title. His video here is titled The Woke Lynching of Daniel Penny. Let that sink in. He is calling the violent killer the one who's being lynched. Not the man who was killed. It's Daniel Penny. He's the one who's being lynched. That's the word that he chose to use. Now, Kyle Kalinske pointed out the absurdity of this statement on Twitter saying, lynched, a live man, Daniel Penny. Not lynched. Dead guy, Jordan Neely. Now, Senator Nina Turner also responded saying, Jordan Neely is literally dead, was killed lynched. Ben Shapiro and those like him are sick. Now, Ben Shapiro actually responded to that by doubling down, saying Jordan Neely was not lynched. He was a crazed homeless person with 42 prior arrests who was threatening women and children on the subway. Penny put him in a submission hold to restrain him, and he died. That is not remotely close to lynching. Yeah, but apparently indicting Penny is lynching, according to Ben Shapiro. Now, Senator Nina Turner responded, saying, It's wild that you claim the man who died wasn't lynched, yet are claiming the man who is alive is being lynched. I'll say. Now, she also shared this TikTok with Ben Shapiro. And it's not like Ben Shapiro isn't aware of this, but the TikTok was presumably shared by her to educate the people who follow Ben Shapiro. Shapiro about lynchings in the United States and their disgusting history. I want you all to hear eight out of thousands of reasons black people were lynched, according to the Equal Justice Initiative's report of reported lynchings. John Stoner was lynched in Doss, Louisiana in 1909 for suing the white man who killed his cow. Frank Dodd was lynched in DeWitt, Arkansas in 1916 for annoying a white woman. 
Ernest Green and Charlie Lang, both 14, were lynched in Shibuta, Mississippi in 1942 after a white girl said they were threatening. Oliver Moore was lynched in Edgecombe County, North Carolina in 1930 for frightening a white girl. Henry Patterson was lynched in LaBelle, Florida in 1926 for asking a white woman for a drink of water. Elizabeth Lawrence was lynched in Birmingham, Alabama in 1933 for reprimanding white children who threw rocks at her. Jesse Thornton was lynched in Laverne, Alabama in 1940 for addressing a white police officer without the title Mr. A black construction worker was lynched at Camp Blanding, Florida in 1941 for insisting that a white co-worker return his shovel. And Jordan Neely was lynched on a subway in New York in 2023 by Daniel Penny after he was accused of being threatening. Now, prior to his death, he was filmed presumably asking for food. It's hard to tell what he's saying in the audio, but you can see he's very clearly visibly suffering from a mental health crisis. Now, as HuffPost explains, witnesses in the incident say Neely, who has struggled with his mental health, was behaving in an agitated manner but not threatening anyone on the train. Juan Alberto Vasquez, a freelance journalist who recorded the chokehold, said that Neely was yelling that he didn't have food and water and that he was tired and didn't care if he died. Now, it is plausible that some people felt threatened by him. But feeling threatened should not result in a literal death sentence. And according to Juan Alberto Vasquez, the witness who was just uh, quoted here and who filmed the incident, Daniel Penny held Neely in a chokehold for about 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Now, Daniel Penny disputes that, but regardless of how long it was, Daniel Penny took Jordan Neely's life. And as HuffPost adds, the New York City Medical Examiner's Office said Neely died of compression to his neck as a result of the chokehold and ruled his death a homicide. But according to Ben Shapiro, Daniel Penny is the one who was lynched. Just despicable, absolutely despicable behavior here. But this commentary is part of a larger trend that we're seeing from right-wing propagandists where they're in this sort of race to a bottom of sorts to see who can say the most extreme thing. And I want to move on from Ben Shapiro to give you some additional examples here because this is what we're seeing more and more. And to be clear, the right never had intelligent commentary ever, but they're getting worse and this is deliberate. So here's Michael Knowles, also part of... Uh, the Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro's network. And let's listen to what he says about the pride flag. Now, keep in mind that this is the side of the political aisle that claims they care the most about freedom of speech. But let's see what he says about the pride flag. That flag is offensive to all normal people. It is a symbol of pride, the deadliest of the seven deadly sins. It obviously has no place in a middle school classroom. And frankly, it should be banned from all public spaces because it's evil and degenerate and signifies an ideology that is contrary to truth, goodness, beauty, and reality. How pro-free speech of him. Also, hey, Michael, this shoe? That was, wow, uh, uh, thanks. <laughs> you uh, want my number? Um, yeah, uh, sure. Hmm, seems like degeneracy to me, but there's more. So you know how we've all wondered what conservatives mean when they say they want to make America great again? I mean, when was America great specifically? Was it the 1980s, the 1950s? Well, Michael Knowles is going to tell us the era that he'd like us all to return to. I want our civilization to be as socially conservative as we were in 1220, okay? I don't, forget it, I don't even want the 1950s. I don't even want the 1880s. I want 1220. I think that would be a good spot to land at. I want, at the very least, I think we ought to be 
as conservative as we were before all the modern ideologies started corroding our civilization. Very interesting. They are increasingly saying the quiet part loud and telling on themselves more frequently. He wants to go back, not to the era of hyper-social conservatism and racism in the United States, but he wants to go further back. Let's go back to the era where we burned witches when we suspected uh, them of doing witchcraft. Let's go back to the era where we uh, stoned gays, because according to Michael Knowles, he would fare well in this era too. Sorry, brother, hate to break it to you, but you would be stoned along with the gays if we return to that era, because they're not going to accept your stint as a failed actor as a justification for your homosexual deviancy. They're just going to stone you like all the other core people. So, I mean, you think that you'd be spared here, right? But you're going right into the blender as well. And by advocating for this, I don't think that these conservatives realize that they're cutting off their own noses to spite their face. But Look, I would be remiss to not also mention the paranoia that we're seeing from these conservatives. So let's listen to Charlie Kirk explain his thought process when he opens his refrigerator. We are now having to, I'm, I'm guilty of this. I, I'm going through my kitchen, I'm going through my refrigerator, and I'm starting to ask the question, well, is this ketchup bottle woke? Is this mustard? I mean, literally, we're at the place now where we have to go through, is the company that makes this? And so... Very normal. I'm sure that Charlie Kirk is living the most happy and fulfilled life. Hey, remember when conservatives said that cancel culture was actually bad? Wasn't that long ago, was it? Now, here's the thing about all of these conservatives and the crazy things that they're saying, the crazier things that they're saying, to be specific. I don't think that they believe the bullshit that they're saying. I just don't. I mean, perhaps some do. Some drank the Kool-Aid. But I think that a lot of them, if not most of them, they're just saying what they believe their audience wants to hear. And in this space, the way that you differentiate yourself in this day and age as a commentator is to be as outrageous and extreme as possible. It is unfortunately the level that they have to stoop to in order to get attention since they can't attract eyeballs based on talent or intelligence. So they just say dumb things and that's how they attract an audience. But I'll say this. Keep letting your freak flag fly, conservative propagandists, because you're only making yourselves look very, very foolish to reasonable people who don't exist within your bubble. So keep it up. Get even dumber, I say. Woke mom. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke test. Woke ideology. Woke Olympics. Woke ideology. 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 